Sometime when I'm going through the internet looking at various articles on education, I stumble on something that's so unbelievable that it just literally makes my draw, jaw drop in a bad sense. And this is one of those stories. Uh, I learned as a teacher that student records are, are sacred. We have very, very uh, intimate data and detailed data about students. Teachers can see them, counselors can see them. If anybody else wants to see them, you need parent consent. No more, according to a new um, industry that's beginning, and this time it's beginning a, a nonprofit called In Bloom Inc. What they're doing is they've got seven to nine states in the country sharing them, sharing with them intimate student data. And I'll tell you what that data is in a minute that goes to private education companies. So in a large cloud, if you know what the cloud is, all this stuff loaded up on, uh, in, onto the internet for certain people to be able to uh, get a hold of, they'll have a student's name and address. Why would you need an address? Sometimes their social security number. If a student has a learning disability, that's, that'll be up there too. All of these will be accessed by private education companies that are selected to have access to it. Test scores discipline records, uh, attendance, even student hobbies, career goals, all this information is being loaded right now up onto the cloud, I think in the Amazon cloud as a matter of fact, to be used by these private companies. It's not supposed to happen. There's no way that people who aren't part of the school specifically should have that data, and yet all of a sudden it's going out. It's happening, by the way, it's a nonprofit. Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, their foundation, you know, the Microsoft money, is funding it mainly. Some money's coming from the Carnegie Corporation, and the infrastructure itself that's putting the information online is coming from Rupert Murdoch's News Corp Corporation. I don't know if you have, know they have an educational uh, wing now of their News Corporation. How can they do this? And the answer is, that recently something in the Department of Education was decided that we know that only school officials have a right to get student information. That means that I as a teacher, if I wanted to know more about a student, I would walk into the counselor's office and I usually didn't even see the files. The counselor would pull out the files and tell me something about this student's achievement in the fifth grade or behavior problems or attendance problems or possible uh, physical or emotional problems so I as a teacher could do a better job and it would stop with me. Well, now school officials have been defined to include private companies that have been hired by the school. So a private company can get all this information that I'm using to help my student. Why are they getting it? What's it going to be good for? Well, they say they're going to use it to tailor some of the new online educational materials specifically at specific students. No, that doesn't wash. That's Student privacy, these are children. These are children who are doing the things that children do, who have certain uh, emotional, physical uh, conditions, who are good students or not good students, who have a long time before they're adults. That information should be in the school, should stop in the school, and only parents should be able to say that that's going to leave the school. No parental consent is necessary. This is a crossing of the line between public and private enterprise that is just frightening. We know that there's a lot of our information being shared about you know, credit card use and all kinds of places that our data is being out there. A children's data, no, it shouldn't be out there and be following them for the rest of their lives. They promise, by the way, that they're going to do the best they possibly can to keep the data private, that they're really going to try to make sure that it's protected and no one else can get in there. Well, we've heard that before. We know that data is forever being hacked into, and the company says, In Bloom Inc. says, we're not liable for that. The school district may be liable, we're not. There's something very, very wrong with this picture. I agree. And didn't you say that there, are there some states now moving away from this because of the, what's been exposed about this company? As a matter of fact, Louisiana, which was one that was going to have their whole state going on this, decided, no, we're not going to do it. I think LA is getting cold feet. And in New York, all kinds of school districts who have found out about this are finding their board meetings are being deluged by angry parents who, who say, 
it's just not right. I, when I say it's a sacred trust, this is me talking as a teacher. I always feel that the confidence between me and my students is something that really is something I should protect, should not talk about outside of uh, the classroom, outside of their counselor, unless I'm sharing information with another teacher who are working on a problem together. The idea of this falling in the hands of the private sector, who knows who these people are? Who knows who their employees are? They're not getting fingerprint clearance. They're not getting criminal background checks. They're going to leave the company at one point and have this information they'll have in their heads. Am I going to trust them not to share it and sell it with others? Well, they say they won't. But you know, even if a college wants a student transcript, they can't get that student transcript unless the parents give an OK. That's a transcript. This is far more intimate and personal, what we're talking about here. Well, it seems like something that is going to be ripe for more investigation and probably will be, I mean, contracts will be withdrawn given what you're discussing. I hope so. I hope so. It's, it's, it's one of those situations where some people leapt in. I don't know if they thought about it well, uh, but it's not a big secret, by the way. InBloom.com, if you want to see what they say, they've got nothing but glowing things to say about what they're doing. They don't talk about the invasion of privacy aspect. But it's out there, it's happening, and I'm hoping it will stop. And I, I have to say, I've always thought the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was doing what it thought was best for education. I don't feel that way about some other groups. There's a Walmart group, uh, the Walton Foundation. I don't trust them farther than I can throw them, to be honest. But Bill and Melinda Gates, I like to think that they're on the right side of things, at least how they see them. I'm beginning to wonder about that. I'm beginning to wonder about the way their millions are being spent on education and the way they and other corporations who believe they know better about education, because if uh, you're so smart, why ain't you rich? That kind of philosophy that corporations tend to have. They seem to know more about education and can tell people the way it should be happening. Well, I think there is a definite link between a lot of the corporate reformers and the foundations. And many of them are turning to a pro-privatization stance, which I find sort of surprising that the foundations would be in alignment with that. But I think there's more and more evidence that they are, and it is disturbing to see this mix of you know, sort of public and private, and it's not being sorted out very well. So in the corporate world doesn't always do everything better than the public realm. Yeah, always, is, that's an understatement. And uh, this is something we'll be talking about, certainly in further episodes about the privatization, because it's a, a huge issue and a huge problem right now in Absolutely. education. Absolutely, yes.